Hey everyone, what's going on? It's been a little while, I know, but I've got a little experiment I want to try today. Um, what I've got here is a vacuum motor and a impeller assembly out of a, I think, a, just a canister vacuum. Uh, fairly old. It works just fine. Sounds cool too. Lots of airflow. And uh, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to submerge it under water and just see what happens. Yeah, I've never come across anyone actually doing this, although probably not the first, but uh, I want to find out for myself. I figure I'll take you guys along for the ride. So in order to keep this thing from moving when it's under water, uh, if you notice, I've got hard drive magnets underneath here and I don't know if you can see or not. Yeah. I got two underneath there. So I can literally pick this up and it picks up the container as well. So it should be alright. Sh this shouldn't torque or move around when I do it. Um, so in my first test, I'm gonna I'm gonna run it with the impeller assembly on and uh, just see what happens. Maybe we'll create a vortex or uh, or something. I don't know. And then I will uh, remove the shell, remove the, the impellers, and run it without anything on the shaft. I should be able to reach a much higher speed. What that will do in the water, I don't know. But uh, let's find out. Alright, we're full of water. I just want to point out this. This can be very dangerous because, as most of you know, water and electricity do not mix. So do not do this at home. I am not going to be touching anything near the water when power is applied. Uh, the only thing that's on the wire is my amp meter down here, which is outside the bucket. And just so I can monitor the amperage, because my Variac can only put up 10 amps continuous. So, uh, before I uh, plug the um, Variac in, uh, so So there's about an inch or so underwater. I, I would have gone deeper to hopefully create like a vortex here, but um, yeah. I may use something taller if I can find some, but uh, right now this will just have to suffice. So with that being said, let's plug her in and just... See, in case you're wondering, the motor will run underwater. It actually sounds like an aquarium pump right now. And it's drawing 2.6 amps. Let's give it a little bit more. Eventually all that uh, air will clear out of there and it'll just be... Oh look, we got a little bit of a, um, a whirlpool going already. We're drawing 4 amps. And I can tell that uh, the motor's barely turning. There's a lot of resistance in the water. Let's give it a little bit more. Five amps. So this is why I needed something deeper. I could, I could probably have created a rather large vortex. Let's get a little bit more. Let's draw on seven and a half amps now. And oddly enough, the the whirlpool is um, is kind of dissipated more as it the speed gets higher. And I can hear the motor speed increase as it starts sucking in air. There's 8.5 amps. Nine point two. I can't really go any higher than this. Um, 
What I might do is I might actually, I might actually pull the power and uh, lower the water level till it's maybe like a centimeter above the motor opening there. And um, that might get us a little bit more speed. One moment. All right, I've pumped some water out. We're about once, the opening is now about one centimeter underwater rather than an inch. We'll see if it makes any difference. Oh, it definitely makes a difference. Oh, look at that. Hold on, let me, uh, let me zoom in a bit. Oh, that's neat. So about three and a half amps is drawn right now. And that's uh, according to the very act is about 35 volts. AC. Do a little bit more. Seven amps. Eight. Nine. Ten amps. In fact, it's definitely different. No, uh, no whirlpool going on, but uh, yeah. Well, let me pump out a little bit more water and we'll see what else it does. All right, we're now about uh, five millimeters above the opening. Well, that's a that's pretty cool looking. It's definitely getting more speed now. There's about five amps. Seven amps. Nine amps. There's ten. It's definitely reaching a higher speed. I'm gonna I'm gonna take the water level right down. I'm gonna take the water level right down to the edge here. So it's mostly sucking air and we'll see how much bubbles it can actually make. It should be should be able to reach a fairly good speed then, I think. Alright, we are now below the opening to the impellers. So it should just be sucking air. At what point does it actually start pushing the air out? That's 2.3 amps right there. And the motor doesn't seem to give a crap that it's running underwater. I don't know what the water's doing to the brushes, but can't be good. Whoa! <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Try that again. Interesting. So it so it pushes against the water that I assume is up underneath where the the housing is, and I guess at a certain point the air just escapes, 
and the motor slows down and water gets sucked in and it just repeats. It seems to be around about 2.6 amps that it just breaks free. Yeah, see, I'm not increasing the voltage at all right there. What? So I won't touch the voltage, the dial at all. See? Okay, you might actually need just a little bit more. I'll just give it just a tiny bit more and press again. So I can I can hear the speed increasing. See? Not touching the speed at all. Interesting effect. Hmm. Alright, everything's been removed. I want to test it with that uh, metal plate on first and then we'll remove it so because underneath there will be the the rotor so we'll be able to get a better look at what's going on but uh, I just thought I'd want to try it with this uh, this one last piece on first just to see uh, if anything interesting happens so we should be able to get a whole lot more speed out of this now It's uh, 2 amps right there, and we're already at 35 volts, so the amps are a lot lower. There's uh, 5 amps. Six, seven. Not a whole lot going on. All right, let me uh, kill the power to it, unplug it, and we'll remove those. Uh, remove these pieces here. Maybe we'll get a vortex once this is off because uh, it's kind of blocking the the rotor underneath. I know the water's getting kind of dirty, but we should still be able to see down in there pretty well. Zoom in a bit more. All right, plug it back in. Oh yeah, bigger, big difference already. Jeez, that's almost acting like a pump. Yeah, interesting. I'm surprised that the uh, I mean, the, the rotor is, you know, kind of a smooth surface. I mean, there, there is gaps in it for the wire, but I figured it would have a lot less effect on the water than it is. So that's about four amps. I don't want to get any more because water's starting to splash over the side already. And I don't want to get water everywhere because I'm dealing with electricity. Well, it's kind of... I was kind of hoping for something a little bit more interesting than that. Let me unplug it. Let me just get this ammeter out of the way here. One thing I noticed when I had the motor out to take the uh, impellers off, is the water actually seems to be cleaning the uh, the calm bars. Let me show you. It doesn't seem like it's all cleaning it, but... Uh... Okay, now they actually look worse, but the... At one point, is that uh, at one point they all looked kind of like uh, let me find a like a spot like that. It was really shiny, and then now now I see there's a bunch of uh, 
much dirtier spots. Let me just run the motor outside. There's your magnets. Run the motor outside of the uh, the water. Just you guys have a listen to it. Now that it's been submerged a while. I mean, the motor still works just fine. The water doesn't give a crap about the water. Hey. Sounds just as good as it did before it was in. If anything, it actually, the bearings actually sound a little better. Before they had a kind of a, well, maybe I spoke too soon. It disappears after a while. Amps are just fine with no load on it. It's about uh, 80 volts. Yeah, the motor didn't care at all that it was in the water. Well, I mean the motor works fine now, but uh, because it was in water, eventually the, the bearings and stuff will start to rust. Um, maybe what I'll do is, I don't know, maybe I'll let this sit for a month and uh, let everything start to rust and then try and power it up, see if it even turns. If I can break it free, um, maybe we'll see how long the the bearings last before the, the rust starts to completely destroying them. I don't know. But uh, I was kind of hoping more would happen. Um, uh, another thing I want to uh, just throw in there's a, for those of you who don't know, I got an, a second channel, FS Railworks. Um, I'll leave a link in the description and uh, stuff like that. It's all about uh, HO scale trains, testing, competition videos. I just uh, completed my coast down competition. Um, some pretty actually really good results there. Go uh, check it out, subscribe, like the videos. I've got like 20 videos on it so far and uh, I'd really appreciate it if I get uh, you guys go sub it. So, uh, yeah. As for this video, uh, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed this. I, I know nothing crazy didn't happen, but whatever. Not every video has crazy stuff. Um, like, subscribe, um, and bell. You know the routine. You've been around long enough. Uh, until next time, thanks for watching, everyone.